Hello everyone and welcome back to what I believe is now lesson 13 of our C++ tutorials. Um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying them thus far and hopefully you're going to take away something actually useful from this one. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a table and uh, nobody likes tables. Tables aren't fun, tables aren't sexy, I know, I get it. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit table. Um, we're not going to be asking for the user's input, although we could. Um, I suppose I'll show you that near the end. Um, we'll say, actually, you know what? I'll go one step further. We're going to do a customized loop near the end. So we're going to start off by making a Celsius column. Uh, then we're going to use the setw command, uh, which is part of the iomanip library. It's one that I didn't go into in earlier videos because for some reason I didn't think it worked. I was wrong. It works. I kind of made an ass of myself. Um, so, okay. We have Fahrenheit and Celsius set up. I used an abbreviation for Fahrenheit. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a double name it i, and that's going to be our counter, and a double named farin. Still pretty straightforward. Just going to set farin equal to zero, and I suppose eh, i doesn't need to be because it's a for loop. So we're going to set int i equal to zero, or I'm sorry, i equals to zero, i is less than or equal to uh, 100 we're going to increment i. So we're counting from 1 to 100 here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take Farron and we're going to set it equal to i multiplied by 9 divided by 5 plus 32. It's as ugly as it looks. Unfortunately, I'm not in control of that. That's just metric to imperial. And then all we're going to do is see out Farron. And that's going to loop a uh, hundred times. And it's just going to go through and it's going to calculate this for each number. Um, what I should be doing is C out i, because i is what we're using as calc or Celsius. And then we're going to do set w15 and Farron. So what this is going to do is this is going to print out i, because we're counting by Celsius degrees here. Um, we're going to set w15, which is going to be a space of 15 characters, and we're going to output the value for Fahrenheit. Again, very simple, very straightforward. Um, and yours truly forgot to put a new line character at the end there, so it printed out kind of ugly. Let me print it out some way a little nicer to look at. And there you have it. Um, as you can see, the numbers, they came out kind of funny. So I have to do a couple things here. Um, number one, before I start outputting numbers, I'm going to start a new line. Number two, I'm going to use that old, old, old IO manip thing that I showed you a while ago, where I use set iOS flags, iOS show point. Oh, and I only used one colon there. Set iOS flags iOS fixed and set precision and I didn't see any with two digits so I'm just going to do set precision of one and so when we run back through this everything should be in a nice fairly straight line this one's offset by one because it's 100.0 I could write an if statement to handle that but I'm not going to waste everyone's time in doing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt the user in this case for a temperature they'd like to start at. So what temp would you like to start at? And you know, we'll make it something within reason, hopefully. Um, and so the user is, you know, going to enter something 
here. We'll let them see in for Farron, or see in for I, actually. Ooh, actually, we should make a different one because we're going to probably use I as our counter. So we're going to just do one called C as well. Uh, so we're going to let them, you know, input for C. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say for I equals zero, I is less than, hmm. Well, let's finish this thought up first. See out how high would you like to count? And so we're going to make this uh, a variable and we'll call it max count. And let the user see in for that. And then we're going to even ask them one more and ask what number would you like to count by? And so in this case, we're just going to toss some backslash ends in for style purposes, because I always seem to forget that when I'm writing. And we're going to call this uh, incur, for short for increment, because that's what this is going to be, our increment number. So in this case, we're going to do i is equal to zero, i is less than max count, and then we're going to do i plus equals incur. And then we're going to do our same Fahrenheit conversion. We're going to take, um, ooh, actually, you know what we can do? We don't have to start at this i equals zero. We can do i equals c if we wanted to. Um, but that's going to reset it every time we go through. So that's not really what we want to do. Now, you can solve this with a while loop, or alternatively, you can just do sort of a, a cheating method and just not enter anything in that first slot. It's kind of cheating, but you can. Um, the only other thing that you can really do here is do something like that. One equals one or some statement that will always evaluate to true. Um, it doesn't really matter. But in this case, we're going to start at C, whatever that is. We don't know. We don't need to know. We're allowing the user to be in control of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to output I which has started, hopefully, at C. Um, actually, I don't see how it could have. So what I'm going to do here is I equals C. And we're going to output for I. And then if we really wanted to, we don't actually have to do this line. We could have done it as the output itself, but let's just copy paste that instead. And we're just going to do the same thing as above. Set W15 Farron and L. Okay, and we're just going to run this real quick, and in a perfect world, everything will work out perfectly. Whew, let's hope. Okay, so let's start at uh, 10 degrees. Let's go up to uh, 150, and again, this is in Celsius. And let's count by tens. And uh, we'll just use 100 as our benchmark, and so it's 212. That looks pretty good. Uh, 10 is 50, and let's see if that adds up. Yep, that's 50 as well. So as you can see, we've we've had some good little outings here. Uh, this one equals one is absolutely a cop out. Um, you can use anything there. You really don't necessarily need to have anything. Um, I'm pretty sure it will actually compile like that. And, you know, there's no problem with it. So, let's say I start at 100, go to, I don't know, 102, and count by twos. So, you know, you don't 
actually need anything here, but some professors will like you to just put something that evaluates to true. It doesn't, it honestly doesn't matter. Um, so for now, this has just been a, a simple using for and while loops to our advantage uh, in data outputting and things of that nature. Hopefully you guys have taken something away from this because I certainly know that with the amount of mistakes I make that I take something away from every video that I make. All right, well, hopefully uh, you guys are commenting, asking questions, subscribing. If you need any help, feel free to get in touch with me and I'll get back to you ASAP. All right, later.